Hello everybody and welcome to Against All Odds 2015 in our TNA series and TW 2020. I of course am Sierra Daredevil and I am bringing you all of the action here today as uh, we have a big show on our hands. It's pay-per-view time. We have a lot of big time matches on the show including a triple threat match for the X-Division Championship, Chris Saban, Paul London, and the champion Jay Lethal. Tag titles on the line as the Briscoes defend against Red Dragon. The Knockouts Championship on the line as Velvet Sky defends against ODB. And of course the main event for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship, Sean Benjamin defends against Austin Aries. We'll have to see how all of that plays out. We do have a pre-show here today. And uh, we're going to go through that first here. So we got a tag team matchup to open up the pre-show. Sees Petey Williams and Eric Young. Formerly of Team Canada, teaming up here tonight. You know, way back in the day, Team Canada. They get the victory over Rocky Romero and Zima Ion in 8-12 when Eric Young pinned Rocky Romero with a spiked pile driver. 49 rating for the match. Uh, 54 from Ion, 46 from Ro Romero. 39 from Eric Young, 48 from Petey Williams. Um, trying to get a little bit more of a push again for Eric Young because his momentum is terrible. His gimmick is terrible. But he could be decent if I actually give him a little bit of uh, momentum on his side, so we're going to try to start doing that a little bit more. But he gets a victory here in this tag team matchup, uh, and we'll have to see where things go from there. Then after that, Davey Richards goes out and defeats Crazy Steve in 915 by pinfall to Tiger Bomb, 59 rating there, 65 from Davey Richards, 38 from Crazy Steve. Um, not really setting up any sort of like decay versus the wolves or anything like that. It was just a, just a singles match here on the show between two people who hadn't really been featured the last few weeks and, uh, Dave Richards gets the victory. Then we have a 41 rated segment where it's just Christy Hemi, Veda Scott and Hector Guerrero kind of going over some of the matches on tonight's show. Uh, like talking about the title matches, talking about AJ Styles versus MVP, talking about Samoa Joe and D'Angelo Gennaro. Bobby Roode and James Storm, beer money imploding to fight to uh, earn a shot at the TNA World Heavyweight Championship and all that stuff. I mean, beer money not imploding, imploding, like they're still together, but, you know, that whole thing. And then the main event of the pre-show is a Knockouts Tag Team title matchup that gets a 47 as the Sexy Purple Thunder Sisters defeat Candice LeRae and Evie in 1040 when Io Shirai pinned Candice LeRae with a moonsault press after cheerleader Melissa ran in and attacked Candice LeRae. Uh, the Shirai is making defense number two of the Knockouts Tag Team titles. 47 rated for the match, 45 from Io, 44 from Io, 38 from Candice, and 38 from Evie. Uh, was that inconsistency, or? Eh, they were holding back, too, I guess. Yeah, because this was our storytelling match of the night, because we needed one, so. I mean, we I probably should have put it on, like, Richardson and Crazy Steve, because that didn't have as much behind it. Like, this actually was advancing a storyline, but whatever. Uh, still got, uh, you know, it was still a pretty good matchup, 47, as the Shirai's get some more momentum and a victory over Candice Lorraine Evie, but, you know, Lorraine Evie have a, uh, a justifiable reason as to why they lost, because of Cheerleader Melissa, who they've been dealing with recently, coming in and attacking them during the match, or uh, costing them the titles. Then, we open up with a segment, uh, they got a 59 rating, so not as nice as <laughs> this past Thursday. Uh, 39,859 people in attendance at the Alamo Dome, by the way. We're running the Alamo Dome. Hick and bottom. We'll see you at the Alamo. <laughs> but, uh, MVP, it's just a, a video from, like, earlier in the day where MVP arrives at the arena and is irate with, uh, Daredevil about having to face, uh, AJ Styles tonight. Says he wasn't, uh, prepared for this, despite the fact that he would have found out on Thursday. But he's not prepared for this and he's not happy with the way that the Beatdown crew is already getting treated by the management here in TNA. And that they need to respect. The Daredevil needs to respect the Beatdown crew because they have the world title. And soon they will have more titles. So we'll have to see what that ends up doing. But 59 rating here for this. Opening contest is a 69 rated. Nice uh, rating matchup. That sees... Jay Lethal defeat Chris Saban and Paul London in 1429 when Lethal pinned Saban with Lethal Combination to make defense number three of the X Division Championship. 66 from Jay Lethal, 61 from Chris Saban, 60 from Paul London. Really good way to start off the show. 
as these three just kind of tore the house down. But Jay Lethal was able to retain the X Division Championship, so another title defense for him. And, of course, there was issues between Chris Saban and Paul London. Uh, Alex Shelley was at ringside, as was Rhino and Kenny King. And, of course, you know, Shelley, Rhino, and Kenny King were making themselves, you know, were, were kind of providing distractions during the matchup. Um, Paul London, of course, didn't have anybody there because he didn't have Brian Kendrick there. So Brian Kendrick's still doing his whole, you know, I'm being mopey and I'm a loser kind of thing. So we'll have to see what ends up happening with that. We'll have to see if uh, Paul London can go find somebody else to have his back because it seems like... Uh, a lot of the you know a lot of people around here in TNA right now have the backs of somebody, and Poland is kind of staying alone right now. So we'll have to see if he can convince uh, convince somebody to kind of help watch his back, that kind of thing. Forty six here for this as Gil Kim is backstage talking to Marie Canales and CR Daredevil. Um, she's back there talking to her about something, uh, talking to them about something. When Serena Deeb interrupts, says, "Hey, you know." I uh, would have liked to be on tonight's card, but I get it, you know. Um, and then she kind of notices Gail Kim there, and she's like, Gail, what were you talking to them about? And Gail's like, oh, nothing, nothing. And she quickly leaves the office over. She's like, oh, I'll see you later, Bet. I'll see you later, Bestie. She, like, leaves the office, but before she completely leaves the office, she kind of turns back as Deeb's not looking at her. And just kind of gives a little bit of a eerie smirk on her face to Deeb. Uh who is talking with Maria and Daredevil at this point now. So 46 rating, uh, kind of advancing the storyline as Gail Kim was talking to the authority figures about something. We don't know what she was talking to them about yet, so we'll have to find out what ends up happening with that. We get a 65 rated matchup. Sees strong South Thugs defeat Jacobs and Cabana in 1226 when Eddie Kingston pinned Jimmy Jacobs with a backdrop driver. 67 from Cabana, who seemed off his game. 55 from Jacobs, 62 from Kingston, and 56 from Homicide. So, there you go. Strong South Thugs getting the victory over Jacobs and Cabana. Um, kind of proving themselves, beating the former tag team champions. Maybe they'll uh, get themselves in line for a tag title shot here soon. We'll have to see, but 65 rating, pretty good, uh, pretty good match there. So, I'll take that for sure. Then, we've got Paul Linda backstage. He's kind of disappointed in the loss a little bit ago, and he sees Brian Kendrick standing there, and he's like, listen, I get it. You're you're disappointed with what's happened. You're disappointed with taking the loss in that matchup against the Guns. I get it. I, I get it. Okay? I get it. But listen, man, I I need you to have my back. I need, I need us to have our back, each other's backs. You know, if you don't want to team up any game anymore, that's fine. I get it. I totally understand. But, like, I was just out there in that triple threat match, and Saban had Shelly, and he had the beautiful people there with him, and Lethal had all of the House of Truth with him, and I, I was standing alone. Like, I, 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 I need some help, man. I need some help to, ta to try to take on all these other people. And uh, Kendrick's like, you know, Kendrick's still kind of in that, that depressed kind of state, and he's like, I, I don't know, man. And Paul's like, listen, I just, I just want you to think about it. Just think about it. Think about coming back, you know, think about... Uh, doing this thing again with me 53 rating as we'll have to see what ends up happening with that we get 65 rated tag team title matchup really good stuff there as the briscoes defeat red dragon in 1217 when jay briscoe pinned bobby fish with a double under pile driver or the j driller uh let me see if i can edit that i can't remember for sure if i can but i need to see if i can edit that um but briscoes make number defense number two of the tag team titles 62 from jay 60 from mark 48 from Bobby Fish, 48, 47 from Bobby Fish, that is, and 48 from Kyle O'Reilly. So there you go. A good uh, good contest here for the tag team titles. That is won by the Briscoes. So the Briscoes retain the titles, and we'll have to see who is next for them. I mean, you know, Beer Money's kind of focusing more on the world title right now. Um, the Wolves are kind of hanging around, though. They could always challenge for them. The Decay is starting to pick up a little bit of momentum, even though Crazy Steve lost on the pre-show. Uh, and of course, you know, the obvious team right now, Eddie Kingston and Homicide, the Strong South Dugs, they just picked up a victory here over the top former tag team champion. So maybe they've got the Briscoe set in their, in their line of sight here in the future. We'll have to see. 59 here for this segment. So we put the segment in because a 
non-advertised matches happening on the show. Well, not completely non-advertised. Um, but a, a match is happening that kind of gets brought to light by this segment here. So essentially what happened is uh, Adam Cole, you know, was doing is still doing his kind of disappointing thing. Even though him and Strong just beat the uh, beer money on Impact. They're still kind of, a little, you know, Adam Cole's still a little disappointed. He's still kind of down. You know, he couldn't win the X Division Championship from Jay Lethal. He lost that big feud with him. All that kind of stuff. When Christopher Daniels approached him, um, this was a backstage kind of thing. We'll say it's, we'll say it was like before the show started, and said that he knows how to save Adam Cole. He can save Adam Cole from being a loser like this. He can save him from being a pathetic loser. And Cole just gets in his face. And after some back and forth, they kind of, you know, they have a little bit of back and forth comments with each other before they start uh, having a little bit of a fight with each other. And security comes in, breaks everything up, and that's how we find out that these two are fighting here on the on the show. And it only gets to 59. A little disappointed by that, honestly. Uh, about that good heat, decent wrestling, Chris Fred Daniels defeats Adam Cole in 1044 by pinfall. After using a foreign object, he cheats to win. My God. 59 rating, 64 from Daniels, 53 from Adam Cole, who's really off his game, which that kind of sucks, because it would have been good, you know, would have been a better rated match if uh, Adam Cole hadn't been off his game there. Um, it was penalized due to a lack of an associated storyline as well, because there is a storyline starting with this match, but it wasn't technically started with that video for some reason, so that kind of sucked, but that's all right. So we'll have to see what happens here. Daniels beat Cole, but it was in a tainted victory, so we'll have to see what ends up happening with that. Speaking of what happens with that, Christopher Daniels attacks Adam Cole after the match. And, uh, you know, bell's ringing. So Cal Bell is calling to someone from the back. And out from the back comes Roderick Strong, who comes running out and chases off Christopher Daniels. Of course, Strong being, you know, a member of Future Shock. 62 rating here as Cole is helped to his feet by Strong as Daniels kind of smirks and stands on the apron. Or on the apron, on the uh, ramp, just kind of posing and, you know, laughing and all that kind of stuff, all that creepy kind of stuff here from that you expect from Christopher Daniels around this time. We get a 75-rated matchup here. As AJ Styles defeats MVP in 947 by pinfall, the springboard 450 splash. Doesn't even bust out the Styles splash for it. 75, 85 from Styles, 57 from MVP. As AJ Styles gets the victory here. Uh... It only was 947, because we're kind of selling... We're, even though MVP can still kind of go in the ring, we're kind of selling the idea that MVP wasn't... One, wasn't fully prepared for this matchup, and two, you know, obviously even... It, it, it was obvious. But even though MVP, you know, still had a 57 in ring performance, we're kind of selling the idea that MVP is not on the ring uh, level of AJ Styles, especially right now. Um, you know, they did fight for the world title back when... Styles was the champion last year, but at that time, MVP was still a little bit better in the ring, whatever, and he's starting to decline a little bit, so it was kind of the idea that Styles kind of got a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a decisive victory this time around. Then we get a 55-rated segment backstage as we find out the EC3 and Jeff Hardy are brawling with each other. Uh, they were not scheduled to be on the show tonight, but they are brawling with each other backstage as security comes in to try to separate the two of them. You know, obviously continuing their storyline there, where EC3 wants to take out a former world champion in Jeff Hardy, and all that back and forth stuff that's been happening with them. So, 55 here, we'll have to see what ends up happening with that. 65 rated matchup here for the Knockouts Championship, which is really good, honestly. As ODB actually defeats Velvet Sky in 1058, but it's because of a disqualification, thanks to Angelina Love running in and attacking ODB to save... Velvet Sky's Knockouts Championship. 65 rating there, 64 from Velvet Sky, 52 from ODB, gaining heat for the storyline as ODB gets the victory, but it is by disqualification. So here we go again. You know, ODB had an opportunity. She had a chance to beat Velvet one on one for the Knockouts Championship. And yet again, there was interference. This time it actually led to, this, to the disqualification, whereas the last time. I think Velvet actually took the, the victory just because the referee was knocked out when Cheer Melissa turned her back on her. Uh, but 
This time around, Angelina Love was caught by the referee, and it's a disqualification victory for ODB. After the match, ODB is being attacked when Madison Rain comes running down to fight them off and uh, help ODB up to her feet. So, looks like Madison Rain is going to try to help, is going to at least try to watch ODB's back a little bit, or, you know, maybe. Because, I mean, ODB, kind of a little untrustworthy, you know, not, not untrustworthy right now. She's kind of a little untrusting right now. I mean, you know. The last time she had to deal with Madison Rain, granted, it was Trudeau and Melissa that turned her back and attacked both of them. But ODB tried trusting Trudeau and Melissa before, and look what happened. So maybe she's a little untrustworthy, you know, kind of pushes Madison away a little bit when this happens. But we'll have to see what ends up happening there. So 48 rating, as we'll have to see what ends up happening with the Knockouts Championship heading forward. Then we get an 81 rated matchup. My freaking God. <laughs> My God. As in a superb matchup, Samoa Joe defeats D'Angelo De Niro in 749 by submission with the Coquina Clutch. Uh, this was just a crazy wild brawl. Uh, this was like, D'Angelo De Niro came down. He was being all cocky and everything like that. And then Joe's music hit and Joe didn't even come down to the ring. He, ju he jumped De Niro from behind. And these two were just fighting all over the place. They were fighting all over in the ring, outside the ring. And uh, it was just complete chaos and ended with Joe locking De Niro in a coquina clutch and causing him to pass out. 81 rating, 75 from Joe, 72 from De Niro. Of course, Joe wanting to get more revenge on the rest of the BDC. Um, he wants to get revenge on Eddie Kingston since Eddie's officially the one who hit him that cost er, and uh, cost him the match. Obviously, he wants to get his revenge on Sheldon Benjamin, who's the who has his TNA World Heavyweight Championship in Joe's mind. But he gets a little bit of revenge here over a BDC member, D'Angelo De Niro, here at Against All Odds. We get a 60 rating here, as uh, this is kind of a video package, just kind of hype, just kind of talking about the history of beer money. Kind of talks about, uh, you know, their time together, the tag team titles, reigns that they've had. They were, you know, their breakup before, getting back together, you know, the run that they've had recently. And now... Uh, now facing each other for this for this shot at the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. And a 73 rated matchup, James Storm defeats Bobby Roode in 13-19 by pinfall of the Night of the Storm. 71 for Bobby Roode, 61 from James Storm. Gained heat for the storyline. As uh, James Storm gets the victory and is the number one contender for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. So we'll have to see who he ends up challenge or who ends up uh, having to fight for the title. Uh, later on in the night, but there you go. We'll have to see as well what ends up happening with these two. I mean, no tainted victory. You know, James Storm beat Bobby Roode clean in the middle of the ring, so we'll have to see if Bobby's willing to accept that or what's going to happen, but James Storm is your number one contender for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. Then we get a 59 rated segment that sees all scenarios kind of hyping himself up for the main event. Challenging for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. He says that it's been a little bit since he's held that belt. But that he is going to win it here tonight. And get himself back on top of the company. 59 rating here. Match itself. Gets a 77. I'll take it. I'll take that. As in a superb matchup, Sheldon Benjamin defeats Austin Aries in 16-28 by pinfall the pay dirt. To make defense number one of the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. During the matchup. Mickey James came out and distracted the referee and Austin Aries. And that's when Magnus hit the ring, hit when Magnus hit the ring and attacked it. Airy. I, bleh. when Magnus hit the ring and attacked Aries from behind, <laughs> I'm stumbling over my words right now. It is, I, we're, I'm doing this in the middle of like a, a very cold spell, which to be fair, if you are watching this live, you're probably also in a cold spell because the entire country is in a cold spell right now. But it's currently negative 7 degrees outside right now, and it's like 60s in my apartment. Maybe a little bit lower than that. Fahrenheit, that is, for those who watch and live in Celsius world. Um, so it's, it's you know, I'm a little I'm a little off today. Also dealing with a lot of, with some health issues today as well. But anyway, Sean Benjamin making a festival one of the TNA world title. He had an 86 in ring performance. And y'all might want to be questioning, and y'all possibly were questioning why I put the title on Sean Benjamin. This is why. Sean Benjamin is hot right now. Uh, 
He might only have, you know, six months to a year before he starts declining, but I don't care. Sheldon Benjamin is hot right now. 72 from Austin Aries as well. He did a really good job in this matchup. And uh, there you go. So we end against all odds with Sean Benjamin still the TNA World Heavyweight Champion. Thanks to Magnus costing Austin Aries this victory. Show gets 74. Only increased our popularity in two regions, but you know what? I'll take it. I'll take it. Because at least it didn't lose its popularity like this past impact did. <laughs> it's not going to be one of our better shows, but it's going to be a good one. Which I think, to be fair, it's not going to be one of our better shows because our angles weren't the greatest on this show. If I'd had a little bit better of angles on the show, maybe it would have been better. But that's all right. I will take it. Ratings for the night. 1.2 million people watching against all odds. Most watched show of the night. <laughs> we were running the same time as Explosion, so that kind of screwed us a little bit when it came to our viewers for Explosion, I guess. But... Maybe we did. Maybe we had a special start time for Explosion. That's what we did. We had a special start time for Explosion, which ran at like, uh, like six p.m. There's yeah, six p.m. Central time. No, would have been five thirty Central time. And then it ran for an hour, and then we had the pre-show for Against All Odds right after it, and then Against All Odds pay per view. That's what we did. <laughs> uh, Triple A actually had a better rated show than our pay-per-view though on the on this night so i'll give them the credit for that one so there is that they were able to have a hell of a show there there as you can see is a uh, triple a in this save um jeff jarrett's there winning a tag match or no sorry a tr uh, six uh, trios match um hamada is there working for them as is uh sexy star still there you know, Boo. She's beating Ibelise in a cage, apparently. Uh, Taya is there. And Helico is there. So, you know, triple, <laughs> the AAA Fusion shot champion is Teddy Hart, because, of course, Jack Evans, the World the world Cruiserweight champion. So, you yeah, know, there's, there's that. We'll give him that. We'll give him credit for that, though. Shimmer's still alive in this save. Uh, Melina Perez is the Shimmer champion, defeating Hikaru Shida and Athena. To retain uh, Team Maestro defeating the Canadian Ninjas for the tag titles. Can Team Maestro being Cherry Bomb and Rio O'Reilly. Rio Rio O'Reilly. So you know three of the four people in this sh in this uh, matchup part of TNA right now, but we didn't have them on the card, so they didn't. Uh, they worked Shimmer instead. Um, also not on the card, Courtney Rush, aka Rosemary. So she lost match. She lost a match by DQ. Um, nobody else right off the top of my head that is on there, but ROH, I also had Proving Ground and it had 103 viewers. What the hell happened to ROH's pay-per-views? Why was only a hundred? Why did only 103 people buy the pay-per-view for ROH this week? What the hell? You got a 55. I mean, to be fair, we have some of the we probably used some of the talent that were going to show up on this show anyway. Um, the main event was Scott Steiner and Punishment Martinez defeating the Young Bucks, because reasons, I guess. Uh, best match of the night was Matt Hardy defeating Michael Elgin. Josh Barnett's still the world TV champion. Michael Bennett worked the show. He's still on the TNA payroll. The, t the damage... Uh, the damage is an ROH in the save. <laughs> the damage. Hell yeah. Freaking Danny Basham. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so yeah, some interesting stuff there. Carl Anderson defeating Ray Monroe there. Uh, but yeah. How did they only get... It was only... Oh, because it's only on one thing. Wow, they only have one thing. They only have one. Uh... I want to look at that real quick. Put that up because I don't want to spoil anything. Uh, let's see here. Vincent TV. So their TV shows are being run on 
an Ontario net, uh, network, a Pacific network, a box, which is New England, or not New England, sorry, New Zealand, and then WAPO, which I think is Puerto Rico-ish or something like that. And then, yeah, they, uh, well, I mean, they had 4,000 people show up for the show, but they only had 102 people watching. That's crazy. Wow. Oh, look at that real quick. Yeah, and Justice only had that too. So they only have, they're only on pay per view in New Zealand. Nobody else, you can't even watch their pay per view in America. You can only watch it in New Zealand <laughs> or show up for the show. That's, that's nuts. Also, you can see why this show only did a 55 compared to their Injustice because, all right, so let's look here. Uh, at the time, I don't know if he still is. Yeah, he still is the world champ. So we had the world, we had their world champion on our show, working a match against Samojo. Uh, second match here, we have the Briscoes and we have Adam Cole and Roderick Strong and MVP. So they only had Scott Steiner from this one. Uh, this four way, we had Alex Shelley on the show cause he was ringside for the triple, for the, uh, triple threat X division title matchup. Uh, we had their tag team champions working a show or working a match. Um, so they couldn't use them. Uh, we have, we had Jimmy Jacobs working a match. Um, we did not have Rhett Titus working a match. Even though he's on a roster, he wasn't there on our show. So yeah, I mean, a lot of their matches that had the bigger ratings from the month before we were using on our show. So that definitely hurt them. Definitely hurt them indeed on that one. So we'll have to see uh, what happens with that. We'll have to see if, uh, if they can turn things around. I mean, the feedback was excellent for them. So there's that, I guess. But feedback was great for TNA against all odds 2015. Look at that, 1.2 million people buying it on pay-per-view and 68,000 people watching it on TV. Because uh, I think a couple of those providers, yeah. The box is a TV one. <laughs> so 919 people. So compare, So the people watching in New Zealand had an option between watching ROH on this night or against all odds on the same night. And 100... What was it, like 100 people watched uh, the ROH show? Yeah, 103 people chose the ROH show. 900 some people, 919 people chose us. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, what other TV one did we have here? Um, oh, this one here, the Bravo, Bravo UK is also a TV one. We had 18,000 people watch it on that one. Uh, there has to be another one. Oh, Sky Deutschland AG is also a TV one. Okay. But yeah, 1.2 million buys. 1.268 million people watching overall. And then 39,000 people and almost almost a sellout. Because the Alamo Dome can hold 40,000. So we got close to a sellout for that show. So I'll take it. I'll gladly take that. I uh, I won't complain too much about that. On like I said, uh, obviously the segments are what hurt us. The best segment we had on the show was a was the uh, beer money hype video. Actually, it looks like yeah. No, sorry. Duh, Christopher Daniels attacking Adam Cole after the matchup and then getting chased out by Roderick Strong, and that was a sixty-two. So that was going to hurt our show rating no matter what. Even with those good matches we had towards the end of the show. But that's all right. That's all right. Because we are continuing to build. And a 74 is something I will take. Especially because I think... I go look real quick. Yeah, I mean... We're 71 in America right now. So, it didn't increase popularity by a lot there. But it still is better. It's still good enough that it would have technically increased it. So, I'll take it. I will take that for sure. So thank you all for watching. Definitely appreciate it. Uh, 
We will see you in this series on Thursday for another episode of Impact as we'll find out what the fallout is for uh, from Against All Odds. We'll have to see now that we basically have it lined up where unless Benjamin loses the title between now and, in theory, the next pay-per-view, it will probably be the main event of uh, Sean Benjamin versus James Storm for the TNA World title at Victory Road, which is our next pay-per-view in March. Um, and uh, we'll have to see what else is next for everything else going on. So thank you all for watching. Definitely appreciate it. In this series, we will see you Thursday for another episode of Impact. And on the channel, we shall see you tomorrow for yet another video.